The following shows the number of yards a field goal was made for a sample of NFL games. So we have all of the data here in yards. Part A wants to know what is the class width of the frequency distribution if you are to use six classes. So the formula for the class width, so class width, it's always the biggest number, which is the max, minus the smallest number, which is the min. And you always divide by the number of classes. So number of classes. So in this case, the maximum looks like it's 54. So 54. And the minimum is 19. They're all in order. How convenient. And the number of classes is 6. It tells us in the problem. So let's see. I'm going to put this in my calculator. So 54 minus 19 is 35. And divided by 6. And I get 5.8. So the class width, there's a special rule, there's a special rounding rule. For the class width, you're always supposed to round up to the same number of decimal places as the data. So in this case, we have whole numbers. So we take this number and we round it up to 6. That's it. So like if it was 5.1, we would still go to 6. If it's 5.2, you still go to 6. It's a rule where you always round up. So always round up for the class width. All right, now that we have the class width, it says form a frequency table. So we have classes and frequencies. So let's go ahead and do that over here. So classes. And then here we have the frequencies. So freak. I'll just put freak. Freak. All right, so the first step in constructing a frequency table from scratch is to write down the smallest number. So in this case, the smallest number is 19, so we write down 19. Then you add the class width and you work down. Okay, so 19 plus 6 is 25. You add 6 again, you get 31. You add 6 again, you get 37. You add 6 again, you get 43. You add 6 again, you get 49. And you stop because you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 classes. So again, you write down the smallest number, which is 19, and you add the class width and you work down. You stop because we have 6 classes. Then you put dashes. And then to figure out the number that, that's going to go here, it's the number right before 25 with no decimal places, so 24. Then you add the class width to get the rest. So 24 plus 6 is 30, plus 6 is 36, plus 6 is uh, 42, plus 6 is 48, and then plus 6 is 54. To figure out the frequencies, you just count how many numbers are between 19 and 24. So in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, oh, oh, just 1, just 1. <laughs> I messed up. Right, just 1, right? So uh, to 24, only 1. How weird. Uh, 25 to 30, 1, 2, 3. So you do include the 30. So 3. Uh, 31 to 36, 1, 2, 3, 4. The numbers are getting bigger. 37 to 42, 1, 2, 3, 4, 43 to 48, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's a lot of counting, and uh, 49 to 54, wow, lots of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, ridiculous, ridiculous, so again, for the frequencies, all you do is you count, by the way, if you add all these up, you should get the total, I think we have 24 numbers here because you can do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, 6 times 4 is 24. So if you add up the number of rows and the number of columns and you multiply, so you get 6 times 4, so you get 24. Let's see if we get 24 when we add these. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 4 is 8, plus 4 is 12, uh, plus 4 is 16, plus 8. Yep, these add up to 24. Every single time, you should get the total, right? So 24. All right, what's the next part say? Find a, form a frequency histogram using class boundaries. All right, so the trick here is that we don't need to find all of the class boundaries. We just need to find the first one. Okay, so class boundaries, they, they separate the gaps. So the trick in this problem is, you, I mean, let me just find like the first two boundaries. It's gonna be 18.5, that's gonna be the first boundary. And I know that because when you find the boundaries, you, you first add these up and you divide by 2. 
So the number right between 24 and 25 is 24.5. Okay, and if you subtract the class width, that gives you the first boundary, so 18.5. Again, how did I do that? So let me show some work to, to explain it a little more. So you take 24 and you add it to 25 and you divide by 2. That was always our first step in finding the boundaries. And that gives you the second class boundary. To find the first one, you subtract the class width. So 24.5 minus 6 is 18.5. So all we need is the first class boundary. You can just look at this, and since you have whole numbers, uh, you know it's going to be half less. So like if it was 17, uh, 25, etc., it would be 16.5. If it was uh, 20, 25, etc., it would be 19.5. You always just subtract 0.5 from the whole number to get the first boundary. All right. So we want to construct a histogram. So we want to go to StatCrunch. So I'm going to click down here, and it should open up StatCrunch. Yep. And I typed in all the numbers already. It's totally rigged. So you go to Graph, and then you just go to Histogram. Okay, Graph and Histogram, and then you left click. And then you pick on var1, click var1. It says bins start at, you want to start at the 18.5. Okay. So again, if you have whole numbers, like if this was a 50, it'd be 49.5. Okay. As long as you have whole numbers, that trick will always work. Okay. Uh, the width is the class width. Let me do this again in case you blinked. So you go to graph, then you go to histogram, then you click on var1, then you start at the first boundary, so 18.5, and the width is 6. Then you just click Compute, and we should have our histogram. Boom, there it is. Beautiful. What a beautiful histogram. So in this case, we have to draw it, right? So to draw the histogram on paper, you would just do something like this. Okay, it's kind of hard to draw. And we want to go all the way up to 8. So it looks like everything is 2, 4, 6, 8. So let's do that. So 2, 4, 6, and just give it your best effort. And then so here we have some numbers. I'm just going to put like some spacing here. I'll put the numbers in later. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 dashes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 dashes. And then like the first one only goes up halfway. Okay. The second one goes up all the way to like 3. It's pretty good. And the next three go up to 4. So a little bit higher. Okay, a little bit higher, and a little bit higher. That's pretty good. And the last one goes up all the way to eight. Wow, that's that's a pretty good, pretty good histogram. Well, kind of. <laughs> all right, and then you just label the numbers. So 18.5, you know, 24.5, 30.5, 36.5, and then 54.5. So that's our, our beautiful histogram. So that, that's pretty good. Uh, so again, you go to Graph, uh, Histogram, and then you click on var1. You start at your first boundary. Remember, the first boundary, if you have whole numbers, you can just always subtract 1 half from the first number. So like in this case, it's 19, so it'll be 18.5. That's the first lower class boundary. And the width in this case is 6. You just click Compute, and boom, there it is. Let's go back to the question. Uh, oh, there's another question. What is the basic distribution shape? Uniform, bell-shaped, left-skewed, or right-skewed? Okay, so bell-shaped means it's bell-shaped, right? It's not bell-shaped in this case. Uniform means it's flat. Like, um, un uniform means it looks, it's going to look like that. It's uniform, but that's, that's not what we have. It's, this one is left-skewed, and the reason is the tail is to the left, right? Wherever the skinny part is. So tail to the left, skewed left, right? It looks... It looks kind of like this, right? So that's skewed left. Skewed right would have the skinny part on the other side. That's it. I hope this video made sense.